So hello to everybody who is listening right now on TuneIn Radio. And when I get any update on what's going on with video, I will let you all know. And when it's up and running, I will uh, let you know that you can head over there and watch. But for now, you will just have to listen to the radio show. Man, oh man. Audio files are very happy right now. The way things used to be. Well, audio files can always listen. You don't have to watch a video. You can listen on Sports Byline every day if you want to. You don't have to look at my ugly mug. Now, we've got a lot to get into. We're going to get into uh, Forbidden Door here in a moment, but a quick note that tonight is Raw, and there are four things advertised for the show, and this is important, as we're going to get to in a moment. We have Dominic Mysterio addressing Cody. We have Seth Rollins giving an update on his condition following Finn Balor's attack. My presumption is he's all right. We have a Money in the Bank Summit with all of the women, Becky, Trish, Zoe, Zelina, Io Sky, and Bailey. And we have Ronda Rousey and Raquel Rodriguez. Now, on Friday, I did a preview for SmackDown. And we went down all of the matches and angles that were advertised. And when all was said and done, three of them did not occur. Now, again, I've said this countless times. When people try to tell me it's exactly the same as it used to be, it's not. I mean, this this Friday was actually the way that it used to be, which was you advertise a whole bunch of matches, and then the day of the show, you'll never guess who shows up, scraps and rewrites the entire show, well, old Vince McMahon. And he did it the night after WrestleMania, and, uh, and then he went home, and he worked remotely, but in general... You know, for the most part, everything had been going along the way that it was going along before he came back. And you could see there were things that his fingerprints were all over and that sort of thing. But in general, it was still Triple H running the show. And he would shoot angles, and he would announce matches, and then they would deliver it. And it was to the point where you could count on one hand in the last 10 months or so where they advertised something and did not deliver it. And guess what happened Friday? Vince showed up, he rewrote the entire show, he scrapped three different advertised matches, and just, you know, whatever. I mean, that Bailey match, Bailey and Shotzi, was for the spot in the Money in the Bank match, which is coming up on uh, Sunday. I guess it's Sunday, right? Saturday, whatever it is, I don't even know. But the point is, that's a Money in the Bank match, uh, and it just didn't happen. So, you know, people were very frustrated, and the word was, well, what are we going to do about it? Like, you ain't telling Vince what to do. So uh, Dave last night on the show noted that people are trying to figure out a way to gracefully approach Vince McMahon and just go, brother, can you stop doing this? Like, we're trying to book a show here. If you want to, you know, give advice or if you want to do whatever, that's fine. But, like, we can't be advertising matches and doing these storylines and having them all thrown out the window. So... We'll see if he's there tonight. I just read up. I just read the lineup, so essentially you'll know how much of a hand Vince had in it, uh, depending on how many of these matches and segments actually take place as advertised. But uh, not a good sign on Friday when uh, all of these things that were advertised didn't end up taking place because Vince decided that he wanted to do something else. And I can't really say that it made for a better show. Well, Money in the Bank is on Saturday, although it will not run head-to-head with Collision, taking place at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m., I guess, over in the U.K. So it will not be interfering with Collision, so we will not have that first matchup of the AEW versus WWE slash NXT premium live events. But it is going to be a big day on Saturday, and I guess we'll see if there is any. We'll find out about the collision rating, but if there's any idea that fatigue will run down wrestling fans, I don't I don't really believe that to be the case overall, although I'm you know, I'm sure there's people who have studied this far more than I have that that can determine that sort of thing but we'll find out I guess coming up on Saturday well Forbidden Door was yesterday and uh, what a show this was and we got a lot to talk about so before we go over the results a couple of notes and updates from the show the only confirmed injury that we know about is Brian Danielson broke his arm in the main event. And what happened was they did a spot near the finish 
where he went for a dive, Okada caught him, and then gave him a tombstone on the ramp. And he threw him into the ring, and he hit a flying elbow, and Brian had his arm in the wrong place, and he broke his arm. And for the next 10 minutes, they had to switch around everything that they were going to do because he only had one arm. And I still thought that it was an excellent match, but it was nowhere near the match that I expected. And it probably was never going to be the match I expected because they did a match earlier in the show with Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay. And this match was so unbelievably incredible. And the crowd went so completely nuts for the match that there was uh, long segments in the Jericho match that followed that didn't have heat. And there were long segments in the Danielson match before he broke his arm that didn't have any heat. The crowd was tired. And if you watch a lot of Okada, there's a lot of Okada matches where the match is 30 minutes and the first 20 minutes are good, strong, solid pro wrestling. But it's the last 10 minutes where the match becomes fantastic. And the last 10 minutes of this match had no chance to become fantastic because the dude broke his arm. And they still managed to pull it off pretty damn well, all things considered. You're not going to see a lot of matches where a guy breaks his arm and it still ends up as good as this one did. But you could you could see that this was not what it was supposed to be. And he's probably going to be about six to eight weeks out. And hopefully back in time for the Wembley show. And I would presume at some point down the road we'll probably get another okada Brian Danielson match that Okada will win in New Japan. But, uh, you know, there's been no indication other than Brian Danielson said he wants another match, and this time he wants to break Okada's arm. So that's the only real confirmed injury. I think, and this I'm not reporting this, this is my opinion as a human being, I think Sting got messed up in his match, and uh, we can talk about that more after the break, but he got clonked right in the head by Sammy Guevara, and he was not the same afterwards, and the match like completely fell apart from that point. And he was forgetting spots. He wasn't getting out of the way of things in time. I mean, it was, it kind of fell into disaster mode. And, uh, you know, after the match, I mean, he was in the press conference and he seemed to be all there mentally. He was clearly hurting, but they announced a match for him and Jericho on Wednesday. So the presumption is that he's all right, but that's the guy I would have checked out. And then in the Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega match, they did a Tiger Driver 91, and I don't want people to get upset about what I called it as opposed to what actually happened like they did on Twitter. And, uh, man, he got dropped right on his head. And guys get, quote, dropped on their heads a lot. But uh, this was not in air quotes. He got dropped right on his head, and then his body fell on his head and neck. And it looked like he could have broken his neck. After the show, he appeared fine. He said he was fine. But that's another one that probably should be checked out. But in both of those cases, the official word is they're all right. And uh, both were very, very scary. The only other injury-related thing, I guess, would just be uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. I mean, he has no official injury. But man, that dude can't run. He can't jump. His knee, his left knee in particular, is just totally shot. He managed to get through a match with MJF, and it actually turned into a pretty damn good match. But that guy, I have no idea how he's going to do the G1 this year. I'm playing DJ tonight. Vinny, what are you wearing? I'm with the uh, shirt and vest combo, which was, was, in fact, a thing in the 90s. We got Craig here, who appears to have, uh, he's Craig Corrosion. Yeah. The ultimate warrior. Da, 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 da. I'm wearing an Everclear t-shirt, one of my favorite bands from um, that decade. Granny actually has a special shirt on today. Granny, Granny is in her 90s. Yeah, would you like? Kitties. Yeah, she's in her 90s. That's how she's celebrating. She's the dressed 90s. in the 1890s. I got my kitties on. You got your what? Kitties. Oh, your kitties. Yeah, that's not what you thought you said, Brian. Yeah. Bye. All right, get out of here, Granny. Gret five. Happy 90s. I wish you wouldn't do that. What? Remind me all the time. No, we're doing a 90s, like the 1990s. We're doing a 90s party. Oh, okay. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. 
Don't miss out. Join us today.